Good morning, gentlemen. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share with you all this morning. Um, today I have some great news to share with you, and I hope it's an encouragement to us all. Um, today I have news that, a message that I believe can change our lives forever, if we apply it. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to stay the same as I am now. I want to continue to grow in the Lord. So today I want to share three simple truths with you. Truth number one, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. Truth number two, that God has created us all each with special gifts and talents. And God desires for us to use those gifts and talents for his glory. And truth number three, that God desires to have a relationship with us, a daily relationship with us, and that he wants to come alongside of us, and he wants to show us the purpose that he has for us on this earth. Truth number one, we are fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. The word fearfully in Hebrew means with great reverence, heartfelt, and respect. The word wonderfully means unique and set apart. So when the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, now that we know what those words mean in the Hebrew, we see that God created us with great reverence, heartfelt interest, respect, and that he created each one of us in a unique way, and he set us each apart. The Bible says in Psalm 139, 13 and 14, I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know them full well. In verses 1 through 10, the word says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. So as we read these scriptures, we see that God knows everything about us things that probably we don't even know about ourselves yet. Truth number two, God created us for a special purpose, and he has given us each special gifts and talents that he wants us to use for his glory. The Bible says in Romans 12, 3 through 8, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather, think of yourselves with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us, as one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. 
Let me ask you a question. Who here can think of something that you feel like you're good at? Maybe for some of you, you're good at speaking in front of people. That's not my gift. <laughs> um, for others, maybe you're good at working with your hands and creating things. For others of us, maybe we're made to leap. I'll give you an example. Growing up, my mom and dad, they got divorced when I was young. I was a little kid. I didn't see my dad, I lived with my mom. The one thing that I remember about my mom was she was a hard worker. My mom passed away the day before her 60th birthday. Two weeks later, my dad passed away. That was tough, it was a tough time for me. From that point on, I had to kind of grow up and had to be a leader. Even though I was the youngest one in my family, I had to lead. So from that point on, I went to work. And for the next 30 plus years of my life, that's what I focused on, work. And being successful. I mean, don't get me wrong, I went to church. I prayed. I paid my tithes. But I never really considered point number two, that God created me for a purpose. About two years ago, that started to change. And God started to remind me that I was made for more than just working hard. In having a big company and a successful business, he started to remind me of the gifts and talents that he has given me. And he reminded me that he wants me to use them for his glory. Don't get me wrong. Going to church is important. It's very important. Paying our tithes is important. Praying is important. But God wants more from us. He wants more from me. He wants more from you. In Guatemala, I go to Guatemala a lot. There's a group of people that are called legendarios, which means legends in English. And we've had the opportunity to go out and minister God's word to villages in the jungles of Guatemala with this group of men and women. This group has accepted the various gifts and talents that God has placed in their lives and they've committed them to the Lord. They don't get paid to go do what they do. A lot of them take time off from work. They change their schedules and their businesses. Why would they do that? Why? Why would they take a day off from work? In Guatemala, if you take a day off from work, that's a big thing. Because they don't make a lot of money to begin with. And uh, they do it so that God gets glory. I believe God wants us all in this room to be legends for him. No matter where we are in our life, no matter what our gifts and talents are. At the beginning of this message, I said, I believe this message has the ability to change our lives. And I believe that it can. But in order for it to happen, it requires for us to make a choice. We can choose to continue to go through life like I did and chase after things in this world that at the end of the day don't matter. Or... We can choose to accept what really matters, and that's God's call on our life. That brings me to point number three. God desires to have a relationship with us. 
the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. The good news today is God made it simple. He didn't make it complicated. We just need to ask him to have a relationship with him. Last week we spoke about what must I do to be saved. We don't do, need to do anything special. We don't need to have a good life. We don't need to be without sin. We just need to ask. Like I said, God made it simple. We just need to ask God to forgive us of our sins and believe in our hearts. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Notice in that verse, it doesn't say we might be saved. No, it says we will be saved. So in closing, I'm new to this group. I think today is my fourth time here. And in those four weeks, I've seen and heard some amazing things that God is doing in some of our lives. But I can't help but believe that God desires to do many more amazing things in the rest of our lives as well. And for some reason, there's some of us who haven't stepped out and put things of the world, whether it's our schedules. Like it, for me, it was my schedule. I always had a reason that I didn't have time for something. Or I was always going to leave it up to someone else. Yeah. That's somebody else's job. The time is short. And there's a lot of people who need the Lord. Amen. And if we don't step up and bring the gospel, we're missing out on a huge blessing. Because the matter of the fact is that God is going to do what God desires to do on this earth. And He desires to use us. But if we don't step up, He'll use somebody else. I was going to play a video so we could see the legends that I speak about in Guatemala. But uh, being in Guatemala, my guys didn't send me the video till 5 o'clock this morning, and uh, <laughs> that wasn't going to work out. So uh, I just like to uh, encourage us today that. Um, that we all have something to offer for the Lord. And God has given us all gifts and talents. And I encourage us, no matter where we are in life, that we would seek the Lord and, and tell Him to show us His plan for our life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.